Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today, we're going to be looking at a new project that is making the rounds right now. This is Game Engine, which, by the way, the fact that this potentially has never been used as a name is mind blowing. It's brilliant. Uh, so it's Game Engine. Gen. And this is a research project mostly from Google, uh, also Tel Aviv, but you'll notice from this marker here, uh, he was working at Google Research, work done well at Google Research for this fellow there. So basically, this is a Google project. And what they are doing is recreating Doom, 1993 Doom, uh, using a neural network. Uh, and a modified version of stable diffusion for the rendering side of things. Uh, here you can see people actually playing it in action. And this is super impressive. Uh, so you're going to see it's actually learned some gameplay aspects. So like doors open when you enter them. It's even smart enough to know that you need a key at some point. At the same time, a lot of it is done very specifically um, it, it, it's mimicking the original game it learned. It doesn't really have any concept of like hit scanning or um, inventory or state or any of those things. It can actually only remember the last few seconds. So if I go ahead and blow that barrel up, walk around the corner, come back to that barrel, uh, that barrel um, would probably be back again. So this is not a replacement for game engines and is not going to be for a very long time. But what they've done is basically they used a bot with a special version of Doom. I will cover the version that they use specifically in just a few moments. Uh, but they, they basically had it play just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of games of Doom. And it's taken frames, 900 million frames of graphical data and logic there and encoded that into their neural network. So they then used that to render the frame they use uh, based off of what you've done recently. They extrapolate uh, based off your input what's going to come next and they, they kind of recreate the process of creating Doom. So you can play it and it feels a lot like Doom. At the same time, it is running at over 20 frames per second as they're doing it, uh, which is a kind of neat. Some more details about how they've done it specifically there. We got a couple more gameplay clips. And you're going to notice all of the clips are very short though. So generally they don't uh, again, it's that lack of permanence that really kind of trips it up. So this is not Doom. This is Doom uh, levels being shown, but again, you come back and that guy is going to be um, back again. And also notice it doesn't really understand, look, so you can see the glitching of, of the graphics right here right now. So this is not per se Doom, but it's sort of a, a playable video of Doom that it, beyond that, it actually kind of understands spatially how the levels are working, uh, has a basic concept of how things like inventory and health work. It is a very, very impressive accomplishment for sure. But this isn't going to be the future of game development, at least not our near future. It's one of those things you really want to take into mind when you're reading about this. So you got a bit of a detail of how they broke it down. So again, they have got these agents that they use for collecting all of the training data. That again, the training data included that 900 million frames captured a very low resolution, like six, 160 by 140 or something like that, uh, pixel resolution. But all of those frames are then fed in and then they kind of extrapolate based off the previous like 30 frames of what they've done, what is going to come next. Uh, and then they, they render the simulation accordingly. They do the rendering for the modified repurposed version of stable diffusions model uh, for doing it. And then also they've got some more logic on top of it uh, for uh, specifically dealing with it. So um, you can see, for example, here it gathers. Uh, no, that's about how traditional games work. Uh, and this is, again, a neural network modeling things. It's comparing itself. So what they've really pulled off is the fidelity. Other projects working on things like Game Jam, uh, Game Jam, there's what they're getting for visual fidelity based off the other projects that are working on similar. Here is how the interactive world simulation is set up way beyond what I want to get into uh, in this particular thing. But again, I want you to realize this isn't a game with game logic like you would have in um, uh, like Unreal or Unity or whatever. This is quite literally kind of cosplaying a game, if, if that makes sense. So uh, some of the models here, there are some trickery done in terms of keeping things together. So you see uh, it was breaking up over time right there. Uh, and then here they've used noise augmentation to keep from having the quality degradation over time. Um, some more detail about how they you know, kept things working, kept the latency down to make it so you could actually work in real time. Um, details about how they train. So again, they took a bunch of downscaled frames at 160 by 120 resolution. Uh, again, I believe it was 900 million of them. So 
over the last previous frames, here's what they did, and then it extrapolates, okay, well, the next frame is going to be this, and then there's what it should have been. So again, the previous training frames, and then it does this. Previous training frames, and then it does this. So you can see, it actually really did a good job of simulating exactly what um, Doom would have done. But again, it is basically fakery at this point in time. So again, overall, they generated 900 million frames of training data. Um, a bit more about how things were all put together, but there are definitely some areas that you want to be uh, aware of in terms of the capabilities. So you get to the bottom of this one, they have a breakdown of some of the limitations there. They run into definitely uh, memory model. They do some trickery here for it specifically. So for example, uh, the rendered view, the model learns to infer the player's location and from the ammo and health tallies, the model might infer whether the player's already been through an area and defeated the enemies there. That said, it's easy to create simulations where the context length is not enough. Continuing to increase the context size with our existing architecture yields only marginal benefits. That is basically the object persistence I've been talking about in the past. That is one of the flaws of this system. Second important limitations are the remaining differences between the agent's behavior and those of human players. For example, our agent, even at the end of training, still does not explore all of the game locations and interactions leading to erroneous behaviors in those cases. So what they're saying there basically is the agent they used to train and learn the game never made it through the entire level. So the parts where uh, those agents didn't make it to, it never learned how to play the game in those areas. So there's areas where are going to be either non-existent or wonky when they get there. Uh, the only way around that basically is more training data or you get humans to actually play through it, but uh, that would be costly. Um, future work, so they demonstrated that it works on Doom. It'd be interesting to test it on other games or more generally on other interactive software. We note that nothing in our technique is Doom specific except for the reward function for the RL agents. We plan on addressing this in future work. While Game Engine manages to maintain game state accurately, it isn't perfect. As for the discussion above. You even see it in some of the videos. So you can see the one where the video, the, the ammo count goes like 32, 18, 32, 32, 18, 32, 18. Because it doesn't really understand what ammo is. It just knows to draw it on screen. So I don't know if there's even a, an understanding of every time it sees, it might be smart enough to be encoded that it sees a muzzle, muzzle flash drawing, take the ammo count down by one, but it doesn't really know what a bullet is, what ammo is. It's faking it. It's one of the most important things to really understand there. Key difference to it in a real game engine. Um, so that's definitely one of the areas. Also, you got um, limitations for memory and the. Um, the actual machines that it's underlying running on. Uh, so it would be interesting to experiment with further optimization techniques to get it to run at higher frame rates or and on consumer hardware. And then they get into uh, where they think that this could go. And I think that they're a little optimistic in terms of uh, where this could be ultimately used. Um, so. Today, video games are programmed by humans. Game engine is proof of concept for one part of a new paradigm where games are weights of a neural model, not lines of code. Game engine shows that an architecture and model weights exist such that a neural model can effectively run a complex game interactively on existing hardware. While many important questions remain, we are hopeful that this paradigm uh, could have important benefits. For example, development process for video games under this new paradigm might be less costly and more accessible, whereby games could be developed and edited via textual descriptions or example images. A small part of this vision, namely creating modifications or novel behaviors for existing games might be achievable in the shorter term. I don't see that, to be honest, because this won't integrate into existing games because those existing games still need the underlying logic to go with those levels. So this is drawing or, or making a rendition of a game. It doesn't actually it's not really a game. Uh, but for example, we might be able to convert a set of frames into a new playable level or create a new character just based on sample example images without having to author code. Other advantages of this new paradigm include strong guarantees on frame rates and memory footprints. Uh, we have not experimented with these directions yet and much more work is required here, but we are excited to try. Hopefully the small step will someday contribute to meaningful improvements in people's experience with video games or maybe even more generally in day-to-day -day interactions with interactive software systems. Now, I think this is a a really cool project. There is a lot here to be impressed by. It's just where you go with this that's important. By the way, the technology being used to train those agents is something called VizDoom. It is a Doom-based AI research platform for reinforcement learning from raw visual information. Develop AI bots that play Doom using visual information. So this is a project that already exists. If you're interested in checking out, you want to play around with AI, VizDoom is very popular in that particular space. Now, there are two takes of this. One is very bad, and that is, say, VentureBeat. Uh, VentureBeat's take of this is kind of ludicrous, unless they're talking 20 years out, 
Uh, so they're talking, the transition from traditional game engines to AI-driven systems like Game and Gen could transform the $200 billion global gaming industry. By eliminating the need for manually programmed game logic, AI-powered engines have the potential to significantly reduce both development time and cost. This technology shift could democratize game creation, enabling smaller studios and even individual creators to produce complex interactive experiences that were previously unimaginable. Uh, behind cost and time savings, AI-driven game engines could open the door to entirely new genres of games where the environment's narrative and gameplay mechanics dynamically evolve based on player actions. And you know what? I can see this part. Yes, this could definitely happen, but it still needs to be encoded into a game engine that understands the game parts of it. This is cosplaying of a game. It is faking a game. If it did not have Doom to train on, to, to mimic, it, it would not be here. It doesn't really understand what it's doing. It's recreating what it saw Doom do. Now, that's not to say that they're not going to get better in time. It's just this take from VentureBeat is delusional. Now, a much more uh, nuanced or balanced take on the matter is the register. And they kind of walk through the same kind of concept of what this actually is doing. Uh, but it's a lot more realistic in terms of the scope of what is being actually accomplished here. But again, it is a very cool project, something that is definitely uh, worth checking out. But you'll see some of the comments on this is like, oh, wow, this is awesome. In a year or two, I'm going to be able to create my own game uh, by, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, <laughs> it's not there yet. But it is a step forward again you see some of the flaws but some of the uh, it's again an amazing accomplishment look at the bullets you saw the bullets right right there it does it doesn't have a concept of what a bullet actually is it's just drawing this on screen but this will evolve this technology and these techniques will work into other tools that will probably be useful but at the same time this is a very visually impressive it's an impressive Feet in general, but to think that this is anywhere close to replacing game engines or game developers, no, not even. But let me know what you think of the whole thing overall. Also, let me know, do you think that this is perhaps one of the most brilliant names not yet used? Game and Gen, that the, the, just chef's kiss. So let me know what you think of this project overall. Do you think it's overhyped? Do you think I'm underselling it? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.